Hello guys, welcome aboard and thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. My name is Felipe Pires. I like these guys in this picture, by the way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So my name is Felipe Pires. I've been working as a principal security engineer and security research at Supinovation. Supinovation is a Brazilian company and the focus in uh, exponential growing and to give a awesome experience to the developers guy, you know, and uh, the peoples. And I am a security research and instructor at uh, HackerSec or Hacker Security, whatever. And uh, this company is responsible to provide some courses of the, uh, you know, pen testing and uh, about the red team, blue team and the purple team and another different courses, right? So I am in Hacking is Not a Crime Advocate. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome project in the the idea in this project and to you know to try explain more about this kind of uh, concept and this culture because hacking is, is not a crime exactly hacking it's a mindset hacking in a, you know it's a lifestyle and it's about creative mind right so that's an, our idea about this project and i'm a part of the staff team of the defcon group in sao paulo and as you can see i love to be part of the many different communities because I believe this, it's very, very, very important to be part of this community because you can share the knowledge, you can share, you know, the different subjects and topics, you can give the, uh, the knowledge, you can receive as well. So, uh, and I'm, I've been served as a professor in some universities here in Brazil and some colleges like Afiapi and Mackenzie and UniBTI and UNICE, this kind, this name of this university. And uh, I am founder and instructor of the, the principal, the main course in, in HackerSec, the name is Mauer Analysis Fundamentals, right? So here, my contact is in Twitter and Telegram, and this is my email if you'd like to send me a message to talk with me, you know, to share knowledge that I, I really appreciate. And it's the project that I am participating. This is my homepage, my web page. You know, I, uh, I won't uh, use uh, PowerPoint here in these presentations, right? So here are some open source project projects that I like, and I will explain more about the OrSec project in this day. And here I have, I've been working, you know, in another different projects like Reach. It's open source tool allows you to create and store and share, automate securely, and some uh, formulas, right? In another project, it's Beagle. It's another open source platform. It's a framework based on server-driven UI that allows teams to make a change to native mobile or web application. It's very, very interesting. In another one, it's a Charles. It's another open source tool that are deployed quickly, continually, and securely. How the teams simultaneously validate different hypotheses with a specific groups of users, right? So here we can find another presentations or talks that I did in some events and another in here, some articles that I have been published, if you'd like to see, right? So today I would like to, before to explain or to do the demo, I would like to uh, explain about the some differences between this kind of topic, right? Because I would like to explain more about the difference between assessed, dest, and asked difference, as you can see here right so but i would like to share this picture because this picture i think it's explain better the differences between and dust and sast right so i i i pick up this information of the synopsis um website it's very interesting because you can see the differences here in this picture right so here you can find the white box security it's a, a sast right so it's depend of course the test access the two underlying framework designing and implementations and on the other hand you have the black box security testing usually the application is tested from the outside in, right so this is the different this type this type of testing represents the hacker approach right uh, and when you try to explore something to try if this application is vulnerable right so but how i said outside in right so another difference it's when you talk about the SAS requires the search code right so the SAS doesn't require a deployed application you understand so it's analyze the search code or binary without execution of the application we can analyze before to deploy the application right so on the other hand in the dust uh 
tools, we need to require the running the application, right? So that doesn't require the search code just to analyze by executing the application. Another part here, it's finding vulnerabilities early in SDLC. The, the, this, um, it's the process, right? So the secure the developer life cycle of the when you need to, uh, you have the, you know, the software development life cycle, you have the line to develop a some software, right? So the scan can be executed as soon as code and deem and feature complete. When you talk about the dust, find vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities toward the end of the cycle, right? The end of this SDLC, that's a good point here. Another is less expense to fix. Take, take a look at this, it's a very important thing because since the vulnerabilities are found early in the SDLC, it's easier right and faster to remediate them but on the other hand when you talk about the dust it's more expensive to fix because you have the application right so the critical vulnerabilities may be fixed as an emergency release right and another is can discovery oops let me put my hand here again another is can't discover runtime and environment related issues right so and uh, since the tools scan statistic code, it can't discover runtime vulnerabilities, right? But in Dust, you can discover in runtime. You take a look, if you compare both of them, you can see what the difference between us, between and the, and the Dust and SAS, right? And typically support all kinds of software when you talk about the SAS. And Dust is typically scan, typically scan only apps like web applications and web services sounds different right so this is important thing important concepts that you need to understand before to start the demo right so here we have three two, three another uh, approach not three actually we have uh, the same approach because here we can understand about the SAS, the statistic application security testing right because you can test or usually perform before the system in production on an, and only in the search code and by the way, I will explain more about this open source project or SOC is currently labeled as SAST, right? And on the hand, you have the dots. I, I already explained about this. And another is EAST, Interactive Application Security Test. Is that another, another different test, right? So EAST is a combination of the statistic and dynamic test model, right? Uh, basically, so you can, you know, uh, uh, putting both of them together and you can realize both of them right together and another interesting approach and talk to explain the concept it's about the vulnerabilities right so this uh, project this platform uh, use the vulnerabilities like a three different security branches right the different six types of different security branches right the first is total, totally critical it's more high and uh, another it's high before it's medium low and info it's you know it means um, to give some information about this um, this kind of vulnerability and another it's a no probably you don't understand more about this how this means because probably or else we don't know what it is and uh, or another different um you know, organization sabi what uh, knows what it is right so in another explanation it's about the false positive because sometimes you have in your company something it's maybe it's a false positive like this you know and the post degree and some information about this database and you can set this information uh has a false positive right another different is you can set this accept risk because for example, some vulnerabilities, some flows, you can set this like a accept a risk. It's not a exactly a, a, a vulnerability, but you can accept this risk, right? So that's important thing. So this is all this explanation. It's about the some concepts that I would like to share with you. Okay. So so now we explain more about the Orusec, right? So Philippe, what is Orusec? It's very interesting. Orusec it's an open source framework that enhancing the identification of the vulnerabilities and in your project with just one or few comments, right? So basically, Orosec is an open source tool that performs a statistical code analysis to identify secret flows during the development process. This is very important here because the idea here is to give 
the power of the developer in the hand of the developer to give some uh, knowledge of the security during the development process of the code right and here we have some you know languages and tools supported by autosec and i will explain more about this uh, another thing so you can you 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 know you can click here in documentations right so if you click here you will send to the overview what it is for sec so again it's an open source tool that orchestrate other security tools it's here it's very interesting guys it's very very interesting so orosec shows the languages and tools to use to be used in the project according to the available stack so check out check out all the support language here it's very interesting i will open here and i will take a look at this how many programming languages is supported and tools supported by Orosec? Again, it's an open source uh, platform. You can, you know, contribute. You can suggest something. It's, of course, is uh, uh, it's supported by Zoop Innovation, my company, but it's totally, totally open source code, right? So here you can see some language like Python, uh, like Ruby, JavaScript, TypeScript, and GoLang. Another is C-Sharp, Java, Kotlin, Kubernetes, Terraform, Leaks. Here you can find another different Leaks. What, it is, what it this means, Philip, in, in this case, Leaks, because you you are talking about the decode, not a Leaks. You are about the flows in the code, not a Leaks. Here, another interesting point when you talk about the Orosec, right? So where can you use Orosec? You can use in, in a CLI, an intuitive CLI. You can use here in a CI CD pipeline. I will demo. I will do the demo in the end of this presentation. And you can use in the ID extension, the IDI extension, you know, integrated development environment. And you can set some comments. I will explain more of this, but here it's the resume of the important thing. The three main uh, you know uh, steps of the um, information that we will receive when you execute the OROSEC, right? So here OROSEC analyzes types, performing three different types, the principal, the main different three analysis, right? So the first is the set that I am explaining to you here. It means it's it's a, a static is called analysis, right? So statistical application security testing. Another, it's very, very interesting, it leaks. It means the leaks checks the source code, your source code, for possible leaks of credentials, private keys or hard coded password. It means, what do you mean, Philip? In this case, it's very, very interesting because sometimes when you are a developer, you are developing your software, your code, your project, and sometimes you set some comments in your code because it's a, a, a best practice. You come in your, all those, your com, your code that you are doing and uh, but sometimes you put some sensitive sensitive information inside of your code or some keys of the aws or azure or another cloud provider for example and when do you when when sometimes when you suffering some attacks the first step of the enumeration is in the penetration test or the or the the attacker can be uh, used to explore your code the first step is to try and find any leaks or any uh, credentials in your code because it's in, unfortunately it's very common right so autosec can check your code if you have some leaks information inside your code it's very interesting another point is dependency audit you analyze project dependence to check for vulnerabilities in the third party libraries in third party lab libraries so sometimes you need to put some uh, you know different libraries in your code to call something and maybe this kind of library is vulnerable so it's very interesting here point right so let me explain more or how can apply this so the first of all i would like to install the OROSEC in my machine have, and I will execute this. So it's very, very simple. I have here, let me check. Oops, let me check here. Um, yes, I have here my folder. Ah, it's very, it's it's interesting here. If you do like to, during this presentation or after this presentation, you can uh, using the same, the same code here, you can find in my GitHub here, 
Philip uh, H6 slash or uh, dash demo. You can find here all those informations. You can, you know, copy, you can, you know, um, clone this information here in your environment. You can do this, the same test here. So first of all, I will install the OroSec here in my machine. It's very simple to install OroSec CLI on Mac OS or Linux. You have to run the command below. It's very simple. I will copy this and I will pass here. Take a look at this and click and enter. And I will set the password because my user don't have privilege to some things. And here, as you can see, actual actual version is installed, right? So if I set here for sec stack uh, version, I think version, as you can see here, and uh, it's this new version, right? So it's very simple. I have here many projects, means uh, actually directories or folders, whatever, right? So it's very simple to use the OroSec here. I will set OroSec. I will, you know, I can put the help command here, and you can see all those explanations in in the in the CLI, right? So OroSec CLI prepares a package to be analyzed by the OroSec analysis API, as you can see here. So we need to set the OroSec, the flags, or command, and something like that. Here, the first example, you can set the start, as you can see, and you can set dash p equal and here if you see is exactly path of the your project right so it's very very simple so let's put here the auto sec again and i will put start and i can set for example dash dash help one more time here because i let's suppose if, if i don't know what the command i need to do or to execute here as you can see it's very interesting cli and with many explanation of like some comments here about the dash a and you can set the authorization token to for the OroSec API. I will explain after and another uh, point. Maybe you can ask me, you can think about it. So, Philippe, I have the Sonar Cube and I have what the difference between OroSec and Sonar Cube. Sonar Cube is related, it's a, it's a very interesting framework or tool focusing on the quality of the, your code. But OroSec, it's focusing just in only in security, right? And vulnerabilities, and flows, and uh, and keys, like, you know, a, a leaks of the keys. And um, it means you, when you, if you use, for example, a Sonar Cube, you can set here uh, dash O, and you can set the format for output to be show one. Option R text. ST old or JSON or Sonar Cube with the full text. As you can see, you can you know integrate both of these this, uh, tools, right? You can using Sonar Cube to to be if your code is you have a good quality, and you you can use this another open source tool, but it's open source tool or sec to be if your code is safe, right? So here, if you have this question, I answered <laughs> for you, right? So. Let me explain here. Let me execute this. Code. Okay, I always get this. I don't know why, but I, you know. Um, okay, so let me set here the auto sec, the command auto sec, and start. And if I don't put any path here, I click just in start. As you can see, uh, I will appear appears this information for me. Oh, the folder selected is. Take a look. This this is the my folder that I am here, right? So proceed, yes or no, I you said yes, okay, and bam, it's running now. Well, when you start the analysis, we escape the total, total of the 60 files that are not considered to be analyzed. To see more details, you can use the flag log level on the bug, if you'd like to see why, right? So I will set here, I am analyzing here my code, this many uh, folders that I have inside of my uh, machine here in this case, right? So this is my project, OroSec demo. I have here some codes vulnerable and another is not vulnerable, right? So let me here explain the result of this scanning, right? So here, uh, OroSec ended the, analy the anal analysis with a status of error, right? So if with the following results, analysis started at here in, of course, and I am recording or I'm talking this, uh, doing this presentation, right? So analyze it finished here. So uh, minus what, one minute, right? 
So here, take a look at this in incredible logs and information. Here, first of all, the identification of the language. It's JavaScript, right? So the severity, it's high. Do you remember? Critical, high, medium, and low. So here, the identification. Take a look at this. The line uh, 2, column 13. And here, take a look at the security tools or RSEC Node.js, it means here the engine responsible to find this vulnerability is provided by RSEC. RSEC Node.js is an is an engine, right, of the detection. The confidence is slow. Take a look at this, the exactly file that you can find the vulnerability. Because you have many folders, many files inside the folders, so this can it will be realized inside of performance, inside of all those project that you set right so the code flip code it should underscore process to a doc exec so here as you can see the exactly code vulnerable right but philip i am a developer i don't understand more about the security and i would like to understand more about security so here we can find the details right so we're using a shell interpreter when executing executing eos os commands Arbitrary OS commands injection vulnerabilities are more likely when a shell is spawned rather than a new process, right? It is, indeed, shell matchers can be used when parameters are user controlled for instance. All those explanation about this vulnerability. And here you can find more information. Information, check out this CVE. CWE78 and here the reference that you can read after and you can find more information. It's not about the Philippe says to you or you know or success. It's a common weakness enumeration uh, explain all those details about this floor. It's very very interesting. Here the type is vulnerability and here we have the reference hash. For example, if you do like to uh, remediate of this vulnerability of course you can set you can use this hash reference right so let me explain another two the difference between here you can see the language again it's java and here the security tools it's another it's a orus sec java if you see here below um above actually you can see the orus sec node.js is two different engines right but here if you see another it's cool it's another language, right? Perfectly. The severity is median, but security tools in this case, it's a goal sack. As you can see, it's another engine. It means you have different engines inside this project, this platform. You know, the, the, the guarantee, it's not a guarantee, but you know, you can improve more your security code. You, your code, it's can be, uh, it can be more safe. When you develop it, you can you have different engines inside the same platform, right? So you can integrate another different engines here. Another in the same case, languages Go, Severity is Median, and Security Tools. You can use the same grab, the same grab engines. You see, it's very, very, very interesting here. But let's suppose if you have, for example, if you use the VS Code. Uh, IDE, for example, right? So you just, you have here my code, again, one more time, right? The GitHub, the Java, the Kotlin, Node.js, and uh, PHP, and Golang, one more time. I just set here my extension. I just click and set here AutoSec. Take a look at this, AutoSec, and you can install these open source tools to improve the notifications vulnerabilities inside your IDE. After that, you just need to click. Let me close here. You just need to click in a start analyze. And as you can see here, hold on, WaterSec started the analysis, your code, right? And here, I think it's, it's small, but you can see WaterSec security analysis running, right? So it's running. The same analysis that you execute in your CLI, now here you are executing in your VS Code IDE. So you, you can manage both of them, right? If you are developing, you just using the CLI, 
you can run in your CLI. But if you're using uh, the, um, a different, for example, if you use um, or an idea like, uh, you know, uh, VS Code, you can execute inside of your VS Code. So here, take a look, JavaScript, all those folders, and here you find in this code, take a look at this, if I put the mouse in above the, in on the, on the code vulnerable, you can find here the, all those explanation, you know, and you can see here the correct a uh, path in the file in an AP doc Java, right? So high insecure random number generator, right? So the apps using in insecure random number generator. For more information, check out the CWE330, another reference. And here, guys, take a look at this, the reference code vulnerable in your project, right? Here, another, uh, like, you know, using a shell interactive, it's high, as I mentioned, as I showed, and I showed it before uh, by CLI, right? In the same case, the explanation about and details about the, the vulnerability and the end of this, you can find the CV, the CWE. And here you can see another uh, interesting point here, because take a look at this. It's, uh, it's, it's just information in this case. Take a look at this. Node.js, doc.j, node uh slash inf injection doc js info do you remember a critical and median and low and info and uh, uh and unknown do you remember info is this case is info no log sensitive information in console right so the apps logs information since sensitive information should be never should never be logged right for more information check out the C cwe 532 because it means the code can be received this kind of sensitive information. In this case, don't have, but it's a it's a tation, it's a warning, right? So here you can find an others and an others, and uh, and it's it's an uh, a warm here and another and another. It's very very interesting. But so maybe you are thinking, or Philip, it's very good, very interesting. But if I would like, to, if I had um you know uh web platform to manage it it should be very interesting and you have and i have here the web application right and you're just getting installing click here install with docker compose because this is the requirements by basically that you need to to have in your environment docker compose docker and, and linux and you have you basically this just copy this clue cloning here and I will return in my demo here. Yes, or the second demo. I will pass here, git cloning, and I will clone here. It's very, very simple. Take a look at this. All of those information you can find in your, in our documentation. You can set, you can follow to the PowerSec folder, right? So if you see here all those information that I clone in from the GitHub right and here if you see i have another examples of the vulnerable codes to you know to try and i will click and i will set actually make install and after that i am install the web application to manage all those vulnerabilities that i will that i will that i am finding in my environment in my project right so Again, it's very simple to install, as you can see, and I'm doing the demonstration. Again, I finish the demonstration, and I just, not I just, but I just, the next step is to see here. Take a look at this. Uh, enter the folder, yes, I did. Run the command make style, yes, I did. And access the OrsX services. This is the local host, it's just, a, just for demo, right? So I will copy the password, again, one more time, it's just for demo. When you set your environment, you need to change this, the full password, please, you need to change. So take, pay attention to this, right? So I will put here another manage a workspace. This is a reference of another, about another demos and another events that I did. I will add this workspace, you know, I will call by demo. Very creative <laughs> demo. This is my workspace. I will set the token 
I will add the token. I will call by demo. Awesome. And I will copy this. Why I am doing this? Because all those, let me go to the examples. Here I have many different examples. I'm go to the JavaScript, 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 okay. JavaScript um, folder. I have one example. I will execute here the auto set start. And you set here the dash p. Okay, I will put doc slash because I will be using this folder. Okay, and I will set here in this case mino uh, dash a because this is our token authentication, right? So I will paste my token that I found here. Do you remember that I create here and I will put here and I will all those information that I find here I will send to my manager right because all those informations i will have inside this manager right so in this uh web application to manage all those informations here so take a look at this i just found one vulnerability right in in java because it's just a one example so let me return here and i close oh, oh in this case it's i got it i close here and i will go in the dashboard and the workspace and I need to go in my workspace is a demo workspace, demo click here. It's one developer. I am a developer. Phone vulnerability is just a one. It's high, as you can see. Okay. It's one. It's Java. Perfect. In this case, it's high. As you see in the CLI, you see in the CLI? Yes, you see. Let's check here. Java, high, or sec Java engine. This is the file vulnerable, right? And in the total one vulnerability, as you can compare here. It's the same. If you put in your mouse here, you can find the information. In secure random number generator, the apps using in the security random, right? So take a look at this. All those informations you can find here. So let me execute one more time, but in a different folder here. Let me go to the home and Thor demo demo yes and the R slash demo do you remember here okay so let me set one more time the same R sec starts dash p okay because I was executing this folder because I have more than one here do you remember and the same token to receive all those information and I think here, do you remember how many vulnerabilities we have here? I think it's 15 or 13. I don't remember the exactly number, but I will receive the, the code here. Let's see. And because I said here, the token authentications, all those informations, I will send it to the manager. Take a look at this. Very, very, very interesting here. Right? So it's finished here and you that's not 15 it's in this case it's seven possible vulnerabilities in this case it's too high and uh four median and one low if you return here in my web application take a look at this i will just uh update here and it's just the one of course i am a developer because i am doing you know my uh you know uh, registry here in this in this dashboard and as you can see here more than one different vulnerabilities here oh okay so take a look at this is i put correct the, let me check here is i i think i don't know set the correct token let me copy here the token yes it's the correct token. okay one more time here let me check uh, before is it good here oh, okay of course I need to click the demo. It's not air or TV in demo here. Uh, now it's okay. Here, as you can see, it's seven. Do you remember? As you can see here, seven and another. We have an because when I uh, execute the first one, I just received one vulnerability. Then after that, I execute again and I had seven. So seven more one. You know, it's it's eight in this case. And uh, we have here all those vulnerabilities and go. And you have the Java script and Java here. And take a look at this, all those vulnerabilities explained in this 
dashboard. And here, take a look. If you click here in vulnerabilities, take a look at this. This is the rash reference that you can find, right? And here is the status, the states of the vulnerability, because you can, you know, manage it in your environment. You can set the risk accept and a false positive, false positive. You can correct this vulnerability, right? In uh, for example, if you set here the correct because you manage your code, you put in the corrected and corrected in your corrected in your environment because you uh, fix this vulnerability, right? So it's very, very interesting. But okay, to go to the end of the, our presentation, you maybe you are asking about the uh, using in a pipeline in your CI CD, you have here another possibilities right so here you can install via pipeline you have i have a here in the github actions right so you but basically you can copy this you you set your job right you will run the installation of the binary and after that you set the porosec start dash p right the same case and minus and dash e it's uh you set true because you receive the, the error in this case one. In this case, if you receive the error, you can broke your code, right? You can broke your pipeline, right? So after that, of course, if you would like to send all of those information to your manager, you need to set here the API of the manager and the token authentication after. So it's very, very simple. And here you can use, in, for example, AWS codes bill, you can use in a circle CI, you can use in a Jenkins, you can use in a Azure DevOps pipeline and GitLab CI CG. All those uh, pipelines, all those CI CG, um, you know, it was tested by RSEC. So here I finished my presentation. I hope that you like it. And in, if you have any questions, so please let me know. Here the uh, GitHub of the RSEC projects. Again, it's open source project. And here it's the roadmap of the product, the project, and here more information about the contribution if you'd like uh, you can contribution again uh, you can open the the pull request of this project and again if you have any question please please let me know and thank you thank you one more time to be here with me during this conversation again and have a nice day